coming up today on Keys to Kingdom Living. God raised David up and established his throne above all other kings of Israel's thrones and made his throne the one that Christ sits on for all of eternity. And God restores us and raises us up to sit with Christ Jesus on that level, y'all, far above, far above principalities and powers and rulers of darkness, the very one who tried to send us to hell, we are now sitting on top of. I bring you greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for joining us. This is Keys to Kingdom Living. I'm your host, Pastor Asa Dockery, coming to you from the War Harvest North Sanctuary. Today, we're bringing you the conclusion of the message we began last week. It's entitled, Lift. If you miss the first part of uh, this sermon, I want to invite you to order the CD and DVD. It's that important and imperative that you get it. God not only saves us, but he can redeem us after we're Christians from making mistakes and even committing sin, and he can restore us. Get in the word of God, and let's hear this powerful message about how God is the glory and the lifter of our heads. Satan tempted man with sin to place us at odds with our creator God. Let me say that again. Satan tempts us with sin to place us at odds with God. That's what he did with David. But God saw man in a low place and through the gift of his son became the glory and the lifter of our heads. We all have gone astray, every one of us to our own way. But God did not condemn us to hell, did he? And allow Satan to consume us without first showing us his great mercy and love. Instead of God pouring out his wrath upon us, he sent Jesus as the sacrificial lamb to take away all our sins. We were the guilty parties, were we not? Yet God chose to extend to fallen man forgiveness, but not just forgiveness. Reconciliation, but not just reconciliation. Restoration, but not just rest restoration. He came to elevate us. Satan would have been better off he'd left Adam alone. But because he went ahead and did it, and because of God's great love for us, God says, I will take what you meant for evil. Now, just as Adam blamed Eve for his sin against the Lord, humans have faulted Adam for our sins. We do it a lot. But even after we Christians become born again, we still commit sins against God. We can't blame God for that because we're born again now. The blame for our sins lay at our own feet, not anyone else. We've got to own up for our sins just like David owned up for his. Amen or oh me? Amen. God is not. Boy, I want to preach this to the rooftops. God is not looking for self-righteous, fault-finding hypocrites to be his sons and daughters. He is looking to be the lifter of anyone who humbles themselves before him. Let's talk about that. Ephesians chapter 2. Verse 1. And you, who's that? Y'all, it's us. And you he what? Made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sin, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature uh, the children of wrath, just as the others. But God, 
See, we were set, ha, headed down that same road to hell, the same road to destruction. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive. There's the, the restoration. He has forgiven us and he has reconciled us back to himself, reconnected us to life, right? Made us alive, but he did not stop there, did he? With Christ Jesus, by grace you have been saved. And what? Raised us up. He elevated us. He lifted us up together and made us to sit. Yeah. This messes with me because I don't understand. I can, I can wrong somebody and they will cut me off. We sent God's son to the grave, to the cross, and to hell. And for the payment of that, God has elevated us and made us to sit with Christ in heavenly places. What kind of God does that? I bet religious people don't like this right now. <laughs> Think about that, y'all. I mean, somebody finds something on you. Oh, God. I know they're going to keep that quiet. It's all over Facebook, Instagram. They cut you off. You're dirt to them. And God says, you're my beloved. And he says, what they mean for evil because they don't know your heart. I know your heart. God knew David's heart. God raised David up and established his throne above all other kings of Israel's thrones and made his throne the one that Christ sits on for all of eternity. And God restores us and raises us up to sit with Christ Jesus on that level, y'all. Far above, far above principalities and powers and rulers of darkness. The very one who tried to send us to hell, we are now sitting on top of. Don't you know Satan didn't see that coming? He said, where did they go, Lord? He said, look up. Oh, oh God. <laughs> then they wrote a song that says, he's under my feet. He raised us up together and has made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus that in the ages to come, God might show his exceeding riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. See, what God is doing, he's opening up a pleat in a curtain. See, this is the way Satan sees the word. It's not been opened up to him, but today, God is opening this up and showing you something about his mercy and his grace that Satan does not know. See, we have a song that the angels cannot sing. Let the redeemed of the Lord say, I was in a low place, but it was in a low place I humbled myself. And I got down on my knees and I prayed and I sought the Lord and I cried out to him and he heard me from my grave. And he came, and he says, that grave no longer belongs to you. It belongs to me. Get out. <laughs> he went to the grave for us, so we don't have to. No Christian will ever go to the grave. No Christian will ever go to the cross. No Christian will ever go to hell because Jesus has already gone there. The place we are destined is heaven. But before we get there physically, we are already there spiritually. And God has revealed to us by his spirit today what his redemptive love does for those who humble himself. Is this getting in your spirit? See, Satan thinks 
He's got America where he wants it. Satan don't have a clue because this book has not been revealed to him, but it's being revealed to the babes in Christ. This is not information. This is revelation. So God did more than just rescue us from sin and hell through Christ. The Lord didn't just restore us the, uh, to the way Adam and Eve were before the fall, which were just living souls. The Lord not only forgave us and laid the punishment for our sin on Jesus, but he has given to us his spirit, and now we are the sons and daughters of God. Wait a minute. For my sin, you give me sonship. I gave you my sin, and you gave me a ring, shoes on my feet, a garment of righteousness for my sin. You gave me all this? What kind of love would a God do that to a sinner? Wow. We're not children of Abraham. We're not children of Israel. We are children of God. We don't go to a priest. We go to God through our high priest. Jesus says, no longer will you ask me anything, but you will go to the Father in my name. Whatever you ask in my name, he will, because you're his children. God didn't just reconcile us to himself. He didn't just raise us up from being dead in our trespasses and sins. See, tra uh, religion don't want you to hear this. But he, God, has lifted us into heavenly places in Christ Jesus. He has, in other words, it, yes, yeah, we like being up there. But it's not about that. It's about what that represents. That's what Satan hates because when you're in heavenly places, it is a place of authority. The thing that Adam put us in bondage to, Jesus has put us in authority over. <laughs> he has elevated us above our enemies. And this is why it pays us pays to take the high road in this life and walk humbly before God. When we humble ourselves before the Lord, as David, our example, shows us, God will exalt us in due season. Turn with me to Romans 8, 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. Well, you don't need the Holy Spirit. I don't know what church or hole you came out of. But you can't be of God unless you have the Spirit of Christ in you. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. It's not a denomination, y'all. I'm Spirit-filled. All that is is separation. The Spirit was given to us so that he could get us out of this world alive. For we do not know what we should pray as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us. The Spirit is making, he's in us, making intercession for us because we don't know what we're doing down here. <laughs> Satan got us so messed up with all the stuff we're hearing on the, the news and junk, we don't even know which ends up hardly anymore. Amen or oh me. I'm just being honest with you. And we don't even know, God, are you going to come back? You're going to leave us here? Are you going to forsake us? You're going to take us out? What are you going to do? When are you going to do it? And the Holy Spirit's down there. I'm praying for you. Just chill out. Take a chill pill. Go to sleep, okay? I need a break. Now they call us bipolar holy rollers. That has nothing to do with Trump derangement syndrome. We are in a class all by ourselves. <laughs> now, he who searches the hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, who, what the mind of the Spirit is, because he makes intercession for the saints according to what? The poles? The will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to those who what? Love God. He's going to work all these things together. If we'll just stay the course, right? Stay humble. 
to those who are called according to his purpose, for whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many what? Not slaves, brethren. Moreover, he, uh, whom he predestined, these he called, these, uh, uh, he called, he also justified, who he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us what? All things are at our disposal. But because the world beats us down and beats us up, we don't feel worthy enough to receive anything from God. But th what their condition and how they treat us has nothing to do with our relationship with God unless we let them get between us and God. We must always, say always, always, remind ourselves that God has promised to never leave us nor forsake us. You've got to remind yourself that every day. And if you have to, every hour. Especially, he will not forsake us in our time of need. Are we in need in America? Oh, you don't even have a man. You don't even know. They already coming out on the news and saying uh, the shadow government. Is sound. Oh, now he's a conspiracy theorist. No, this is actual news. They have come out of the agencies and saying we have to undermine this president because he's taking it off the rails. That means our government is divided, and anything that's divided against itself cannot stand. We are on the brink of a constitutional crisis. And if we're not careful, it's going to shake the confidence of Americans in our government. And that's what Satan is after. He says, if I can ever get the American people to lose confidence in the government, I can create a revolt and they will turn on themselves and they will fall into my pit. But the devil is a liar because God said, I am still on the throne. So we have to remind ourselves, when we see them acting fanatical, they talk about Pentecostals. I don't think I've ever, and I was raised in Pentecost, seen people act like they did at the Kavanaugh hearings this week. Awful. They ought to censure them just for the unbecoming conduct God's not going to forsake us. The only way that's going to happen is if we forsake him. Peter tells us in his epistle, in his letters, that Satan is going about his roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. But we are simply to resist his tactics. <laughs> that's hard to do, y'all, because we're here in the mess. It's hard to flick off something when you're standing up to it knee deep. But you've got to. They tried to bury a goat one time. They throw dirt in there. It landed on top of him. He shook it off and stood on it. And every time they threw dirt on him, he shook it off and stood on it. Eventually, he walked out of the pit because his enemies filled his pit for him. The only reason we would fall prey to Satan's device, listen to me, hush, y'all. The only reason we would fall prey to Satan's devices and his nasty lies and believe that God has forsaken us is as if it is because we have first taken our eyes off Jesus. There's the problem. The church has, a, to a great degree, taken their eyes off Jesus because they got the word taken out of the church. He is the word. And when you don't preach the word, what are you going to give the people? The man. You want some more? This was really a short sermon. God, listen, God shakes kingdoms. The Bible tells us he shakes everything that can be shaken so that that which remains is of him. But Satan shakes us. God shakes kingdoms, but Satan shakes us. He wants to shake our faith in God. So he comes and he stirs up junk in the earth against us so that he can shake our confidence in God. And if he can shake that, he can shake us. 
If you don't, listen to me. If you don't allow your faith in God to be shaken, you will not be shaken either. That was worth somebody's drive. That will keep you out of the mental ward. But if he ever, if you ever, like Samson, tell Satan how he can get your faith, it's over. Has Satan used recent events in your life or on the news to shake your confidence and rob you of God's peace? <clears throat> I see a lot of stress. As because people, Christians, are giving heed to what they're seeing and what they're hearing. And it's disconcerting. And then the storm gets a little closer and a little bit louder. See, God help me. Have you noticed? It's not about left or right. <clears throat> this is spiritual, y'all. It's, it's, it's just spiritual. Have you noticed that when something is thrown out there to try to stir up people that are of faith, to come against the Constitution, to come against the Word of God, they, they throw out something and they see how that's going to affect us. And they say, well, it messed with them a little bit. Let's go a little bit deeper. And so they, they get a little meaner, a little nastier, hit a little bit lower. And they see how that works. And then they start seeing that had impact. They said, now we know how to get them. We will go through him, the president. We'll get to them through him. Have you noticed since President Trump was elected, the heat's gone off the church? Under the past administration, the church was constantly under attack. You may remember some of y'all has been around here for eight or ten years. We had a Sunday where we joined other pastors throughout this nation that stood up and says, we defy the IRS to shut us down for speaking the truth and not caving to political correctness. Y'all remember that? There were thousands of pastors sent in their video, just like us, to the IRS and says, here you go, boys. We were fighting the government for eight years, trying to shut us down. All that's gone. You know why? The president has drawn the heat. All that was against one entity, now it's going against one man. Do you see the pressure that man is under? And he's still standing. And they hate it. <laughs> well, you don't know what he said off air. Yeah, we do. They leaked it out in October of 2015. Or 16, 2016, they leaked it out. We know he had a foul mouth. We know he still cusses. But we know that he humbled himself and said, Lord, help me down here. And he's come out and told him, no. Shh, 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 shh. Did y'all know, a lot of y'all probably don't even know this. The other night he met with uh, hundreds of pastors. And he warned them. He says, what we have gained in two years there is a plot, once they impeach me and get me out, if this is able to happen, they will come after you and take back everything they they've have already taken from you in the past. They will do more against you. And out of all of those pastors that were in there, we don't hear anything from any of them about the warning that President Trump gave them to give to the people. Now you know why God's using him and the church is remaining quiet. The sheep, the shepherds, are afraid to speak. If you've got a pastor that preaches the truth, you best pray for him. Now, if you've lost your peace and you feel as though you're drowning because you're overwhelmed by what's going, the negativity that's going on, the violence, the trash that is being dumped in our halls of Congress, then know that Satan has shaken your confidence in God and his power to keep you safe in Christ. God's not forsaken us. Tell yourself this, 
if God fought for me when I was wrong and in sin to save me, how much more is God going to deliver me from the enemy that rises up against me? I have a suspicion that God is allowing Satan to sift the church as he allowed Simon to be sifted as wheat. Why would God do that to his people? God wants to try our hearts to see if we're going to humble ourselves and trust in him or if we're going to turn our hearts and walk in our own ways away from him. That's why the sifting is going on. Well, it sounds to me like God's against us. No, God's against our prideful ways. Don't get the two confused. Don't conflate these. They're not the same. God loves us. He hates our ways. He wants us to change. So while he loves us, he loves us enough to chasten us. And he scourges every son he receives. So he is loving us by correcting us right now, and he's allowing us to be sifted. And so you say, well, what part of this lifts me up? <laughs> he punishes us so that we won't be punished with the world. I had rather be punished now. Judgment begins at the house of God. And if it begins there, where, where are those outside going to fall? He's got a clean house first. And so we're in a sifting, and in the sifting, it feels like, where's God? And the enemy is, is rising up, and there's many that's against us and says, where is your God? Why isn't he helping you? And many in the church are having their faith shaken because God's not showing up like he used to. And we're being tried, y'all. I mean, it is trying. I'll be honest with you. It is trying me. Pressure, enormous pressure. It's like, God, you got to help me up here because I'm only human. So he showed me a picture. In our, our uh, subdivision, we have trees. We're almost out of time, and thank you so much for staying in, uh, in tune with us and hearing the message that God is bringing out. There is so much to this. If you've missed any part of it, please call us, contact us. Let us know you want a copy of the, either the CD or the DVD and always specify what message it is by title. It's called Lift. We'd love to send it out to you so you can hear the, the message in its entirety and without any interruption. And as always, we want to see that God's people are lifted up because he is the glory and the lifter of our head. Thank you so much for being part of this. We pray that it has been a tremendous blessing to you as it was here at War Harvest Church North. I love how God is moving and, and changing lives literally by his word and his Holy Spirit. That's what it's about. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. So I get ready to leave you. If you have any prayer requests or uh, prayers reports, please send those in. You can contact church office or you can email us at prayer at whcnorth.org. Until this time next week, may God richly bless you is my prayer.